Henri de Lubac had uh, a very interesting thesis that had gotten him in trouble. <laughs> this is from a 1 Peter 5 article. The thesis of these essays, which got him in trouble, was that all men, according to their very nature, possessed one supernatural end, with grace is sufficient to attain the beatific vision without need of the added gratuitous graces obtained through sacramental incorporation into the mystical body of Christ. But that one quote right there, that, that was anathema, or something like it, under the pontificate of Pius XII, somehow shifted and won him favor, de Lubac, in the eyes of JP2. That one expression there could be the explanation for this countenance, well, t- this, this facial shift of the entire church. I wrote my 550-page doctoral dissertation on that. On that statement, really? That's my really. Yes, dude. Thought, that's that is my. That's where I live. That's my couch. That topic. That statement. What my my, my doctoral dissertation is Thomas Aquinas on the twofold end, a natural law and the twofold end of man, and so I study the question of whether man has one or two ends, natural uh, beatitude and supernatural beatitude, or only supernatural beatitude which is Dulu Box. Mm-hmm. And then I source e- every single citation in the entire corpus of Thomas Aquinas on this topic and settle it. Every single time Thomas doesn't say one end or two ends, he says duplex, which is Latin for twofold. Mm. So nice. It's, it's a double end that has a, un- a union to it. And the analogy I, I use by using natural law is there is divine law and natural law and they aren't separate, but they're actually linked. They're hinged on one another. And so I say, so likewise, the the metaphysical and moral end of a human person, us, is also a natural end and a supernatural end that are hinged and linked. Right. That's my contribution Good. to academia. That's nice. And as far as I know, I'm the only, I'm the only person that's done it because most translations into English or other language that talk about Thomas on this when he says duplex they put they translate it as two which is kind of right. weird but de Lubac will say that not only without the sacraments but without preaching without elicited knowledge yeah we're just kind of yes. we're born and that's that's in our hard drive so that that is the justifier the facilitator of arguably if you if that that one precept of the idea of you know having pagan rituals in St. Peter's or, yeah, or bowing down. That's what before. I say in my in my dissertation. I say, look, if you believe that all humans from the moment they're conceived have a natural desire for the transcendent beatific vision, if you really believe that, that means all unbaptized babies go immediately to heaven because they have a desire for heaven. And that also means every Hindu walking around doing whatever he's doing. With it, whether it's God or shopping at the supermarket, he also has a transcendent natural desire for the beatific vision. So whatever he's doing, it's oriented towards heaven, the beatific vision. So when he dies, he goes to heaven. And what you end up with at the end of the day is all religions are grasping at the beatific vision. And therefore, you hope and you have a reasonable hope, once you assume this, that all people will be saved. It ends up with Balthazarian soteriology, quasi-universalism, and it also ends up with you saying, well, yeah, all these people who are open to the transcendent, open to religion, they're really, really just grasping for the Trinity and the beatific vision, and so they're all saved too. So everything that you're seeing right now is based off this false uh, statement by de Lubach. And the reason that that I'm on YouTube and I'm so passionate about all this stuff is I wrote a dissertation going after the very heart of this movement. And, sure. and I'll tell you, the mascot, I, I'm always dogging on Balthazar, but the guy who's the most seductive and laid all this out was Henri de Lubac. This is no. everything that's to do with heaven, hell, salvation, Pachamama idols, Buddhists <laughs> at Assisi. Yeah. All of these things are related. Someone even asked in a comment right now, why is this important? Why are we talking about this? over our heads no it's not over your heads look 
if a human person is conceived in their mother's womb, a sperm and an egg come together, boom, and that embryo is already desiring the beatific vision, or he's not, that fact right there changes everything you think about. Infant baptism, who can receive the Eucharist, do other religions have salvific properties in them? Do we begin with humanity or do we begin with divinity? All of these questions are determined right. by what you say regarding that question. And this was a right. huge debate in the 1940s, so much so that the Pope had to write an encyclical on it. Right. And it it's all about Vatican II. It's all about liturgy. If we're naturally desiring, that means we all naturally, when we come to, together as community, are all oriented towards God in our very nature, which is circular. Right. If right. it's elicited, the desire for the beatific vision is elicited, which is the proper way of understanding. If you talk about obediential potency, well, yeah, that means the church is going to go in a straight line and the priest is going to be with you. It means you're going to baptize your baby as soon as possible because you don't want to risk that baby not getting in the beatific vision if the baby should die, which is traditional Catholicism. All of these things come together. So we right. must understand this. We must study it. And I think there needs to be more videos on it. You just say, okay, which which group are you? Right. Are you a Rahner? Are you a, a Delubach? Or are you a Gary Lagrange? Mm -hmm. That's that's what we need to be asking. Exactly. And then we don't have to – it doesn't have to get ugly. Right. Let's just debate the merits of Rahner that's right. or whoever the head is, uh, Delubach or whoever the head of Communio rightly is, maybe yeah. Ratzinger, or – is it Gergou Lagrange? And let's go. And and we don't have to tear each other to pieces. I, I'm that's not what anyone's looking to do. It's just it's great when someone says, "I am a, a Gergou Lagrange guy. I'm a Rahner guy." So okay, let's 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 go through this then. Mm -hmm. That's why we're talking about this now. Absolutely. Ideas have consequences. Major consequences.